So, it looks like Blizzard is finally starting to feel the effects of their many years of mismanagement. They've announced that not only are they putting Overwatch 2 on Steam, but it's looking like there's a decent chance that the entire Overwatch League might dissolve as well. Blizzard has always been one of the industry titans that I think of when I think of video games, so it's interesting to see them fall this far, especially over what was one of their more popular IPs in recent years. So let's talk about the fall of Blizzard and the fall of Overwatch. I think when Overwatch first launched, Blizzard was at their height, not even mentioning Hearthstone, which was huge at the time, but Overwatch was a self-promoting game. It was a hero battler with a cast of a lot of really iconic characters that debuted with the game. When it first launched, Overwatch was immensely popular. I remember spending a lot of hours playing it with some of my friends, but it was also a very streamable game. Blizzard realized quickly that there was a decent community forming around Overwatch, and that people liked watching Overwatch streams as well. Combine those observations with an incredibly incompetent leadership team and you've got what we've got right now. Overwatch 2 is dead. Overwatch League is dying. But why? And how does them putting it on Steam signal that? Well, the way I see it, putting Overwatch onto Steam is a pretty blatant acknowledgement that the game is dying and that they really need to try to desperately get new players. They've resisted putting their games onto other platforms since, well, forever. Battle.net, their own launcher, has been around for as long as I can remember. It always seemed to me like they preferred having their own little ecosystem System, where you could only buy, look at, and play Blizzard and later Activision games. After all, every time you open the Battle.net app to play one game and see their other ones listed, that's basically a free advertisement for their games. So the fact that they're willing to abandon over a decade of precedent to open the game up to a wider audience isn't a good sign, but it is all their fault. To be fair, Overwatch had been doing bad for a while. They kept putting their hands in and making unnecessary changes to the meta, but most of all, it was probably the intense monetization that really destroyed the game's player base. You see, originally, you paid for Overwatch, but you could also buy cosmetics in the game. Now, technically, you could buy cosmetics with coins earned through play, but considering the amount that you got every game, it would have been functionally impossible. So the game had loot crates that you could open with a chance to win whatever skin was on offer. Pretty much CSGO cases, but a little bit worse because of the younger audience that made up a much higher portion of Overwatch's player base than CSGO's. On top of that, they really didn't seem to actually add much over the years. They would reach in and screw stuff up, but it seemed like most of the development time was spent on making more and more cosmetic skins. Actual content expansions like map releases were rare especially considering this is Blizzard we're talking about, and because of a combination of the slightly predatory microtransactions, stale gameplay, bad design choices, and general burnout, the game slowly died. Also, they changed McCree's name at some point, which made me unreasonably upset, considering I quit well before that change, since they had named him after some dude and that dude had done something bad, but like, come on man, you could have just retconned the reason for the name and disassociate it, rather than ruin my favorite character. Anyway, Overwatch is basically dead, so what did they do? They decide to plan a sequel game. The problem was that Overwatch 2 really wasn't much of a sequel at all. You know how most games will have new characters, new story, new maps, new everything in a new game? Like, it would be ridiculous to launch a sequel without changing any at all about the game, right? Well, Blizzard knew that too, so they promised a new expansive PvE mode that would be the main draw of the new game. The new game that I'm pretty sure they had said they were working on for a long time before they announced it. So what happened? Well, they launched the sequel, but since the PvE was so much work, they launched it with just the normal hero battler from the first game. From a player's perspective, it was basically identical to the original game. Like everything from the maps to the gameplay, the only thing that really stuck out was they changed up the team comps a bit. It was basically laughed at by everyone at launch. Not something you want when you're trying to save your IP. But people still played it, mostly because, well, it was free now. Overwatch 1 you had to pay for, but Overwatch 2, free to play? But with everyone's favorite thing added, in place of the old predatory monetization system, a battle pass. You can imagine how thrilled people were about this, I'm sure. Also, they turned off the original game servers for Overwatch 1 to force people to play the new one and inflate its player numbers. And the diehard fans kept on playing, just waiting for the PvE mode that was sure to be really really cool until they announced that it was never coming because it was too much work. Um, excuse me, but aren't you guys Blizzard? Aren't you a games company? Why can't you actually make a game? Instead, they are now going to release seasonal PvE maps for an added cost. And obviously that really made everyone who was still playing really angry, and well, that brings us to current day where they are so desperate to get players, they're willing to put the game on Steam. 
Except that isn't the entire story. You see, in the background this whole time, the Overwatch League has been active. It was a professional esports league that borrowed from the territorial design of regular sports teams by giving the teams a home location and a name associated with it. For instance, one of the teams was called the Boston Uprising. I only know that because they gave me a free bag at PAX East one year. Now, this might make sense for a developed esports org that can bring fans into their events and like fill stadiums or something, but there really was not enough people ever watching Overwatch League to justify their design. Also, given the advent of online streaming, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world, you can still watch whatever team you want. So basically the whole idea made no sense beyond starting an esports team. They had a lot of money behind this league though, and were determined to make it happen. I'll never forget the day I came home my grandpa was sitting watching Overwatch League on TV. Not sure how they swung it, but every once in a while it would be on some news network or something. He had no idea what he was looking at and turned it off after I tried to explain it to him because there was too much going on on the screen. Wise choice to be honest. I don't know who they thought they were going to reach by putting it on TV. But anyway, as players stopped playing Overwatch, they understandably lost interest in the Overwatch League. On top of that, COVID didn't seem to help matters, so now they're stuck with teams costing tons of money in an expensive industry where most esports already lose money even if they're popular, and they are stuck playing a game no one watches. It's a disaster. So finally, they've sent out a vote to each of the owners of the teams, allowing them to have the option to dissolve the league and stop the ongoing costs, or to keep the league going and change the format. Oh, and if they decide to end the league, all the owners will get a cool six million million dollars is a termination fee. Gee, I wonder what they're going to choose. Keep operating an esports team that bleeds money or take six million dollars? Hard choice to be sure. Anyway, it's kind of sad to see it go this way. I think that with more competent leadership, Overwatch could have been a way more successful franchise than it has been. I wonder if now that they're going to be sold to Microsoft, stuff will change. It's kind of obvious that some big leadership change is needed, but up until now, nothing's been done. Are you hopeful for the future of Overwatch? And by extension, Blizzard? When was the last time you even heard about Overwatch? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching till the end. Have a great day and God bless you.